Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview was a real uh, treat to do for a whole lot of reasons, and and, uh, one of them was that I was able to have a fun conversation with Aaron Wolf from Howling Wolf Productions and Graham Green about their new uh, film, Tar. But also having Graham on the line was just, uh, he probably doesn't really realize it anymore, uh, what a a legend he really is. And if he's listening to this, which I doubt he is, he's rolling his eyes right now. That's my guess. But I mean, come on, Dances with Wolves, Green Mile, Through Black Spruce, uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance, uh, Graham. Graham has about 165, I'm going to say 165 film credits uh, to his name on his IMDb profile. This is a guy who's been around and uh, we talk about improv. We talk about real acting and what that actually means. And it's really interesting to see the dynamic between Aaron and Graham on this. And and this is a this is a thriller, I guess you could call this film. I, I almost hesitate to call it a, a horror film, but it's a, it's a fun sort of scary film that you people are going to watch around Halloween. That's for sure. And that's part of the reason why it's out and about right now. It reminded me of an old film called Fantastic Voyage. And the reason for that is an old 1966 film I saw when I was quite young and it scared the heck out of me. And, and, uh, there's some similarities there for me on a, on a variety of level. And Aaron's probably pleased about that, that it took me back to that. But, but, uh, Cloverfield, the fly, the thing, alien, uh, jaws, these are, these are some scary movies that are mon- really monster movies. And, 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 and I think these types of films, there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. And as Aaron says, that's great if you find that or you want to, you know, tease that out or peel those layers back. But really what he wants to do is he wants people to have, you know, just a great time. And uh, it's amazing what you can find when you dig a hole in the ground. Basically, that's all I'm going to say about tar. But check it out. And uh, we, we get into this notion of, of why there's a kernel of truth in every story that we tell. Graham talks about water walking and about, as I said, real acting and 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 how he developed his acting chops. This is really interesting, how he developed his acting chops on a park bench. And isn't that wonderful because i think there's something to say there about relationships and conversation and community so i uh, hope you really enjoy this conversation i certainly did again it was a real treat also had david thulis on the show just recently talking about his film eternal beauty and again a treat for me as a as a podcaster and as a film lover when you look at a, a career like david's and, and the stories that he's been a part of telling over the years as well so check that out that's going to be coming up soon too and uh, don't forget you're probably getting to this through acast or spotify or itunes or something like that um face to face live.ca is where all of this is hosted for the time being and you can find more out about uh, the podcast there and about what i do but also uh, you can uh, over 530 interviews there by the way we can add you can advertise with us we can we can uh, shout outs in interviews we can put you up on the website we can get you into the newsletter and please sign up for that by the way and tweet about us get word on the street about face to face and some of the work we're doing here we really are about casual conversation and an intelligent inspiration and, and and planting seeds hopefully seeds of change that are gonna you know be nurtured into something else and something other and it's and and have some fun while we're doing it so uh, step into that and please you know what um it, it, leave us a review I, I'm, I'm asking you to do that we've got a contest coming up it's going to be kind of cool that you're going to hear about very soon but leave a review for us on itunes or spotify I'd really appreciate it uh, but thumbs up on youtube wherever you're hearing this because they go a long way believe me they really really do a little social media uh, can uh, take us uh, you know into the future <laughs> believe it or not when it comes to podcasting so getting noticed is really important um check out the work of uh, aaron wolf online you're probably very familiar with graham's work but uh, aaron is also a documentarian and uh he's done some brilliant work uh, already and working on some new uh, uh, films as well as far as i know but coming right up uh, a real treat once again as i said earlier for me an interview with aaron wolf and graham green talking about their new film tar 
Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by two very uh, special guests here with us today. And it's a, what, a, what a pleasure to be able to connect this way digitally in this crazy uh, COVID world we live in. We've got Aaron Wolf and, and Graham Green here with us today to talk about a new film, a new horror film. Can I call it a horror film, actually, Aaron, coming out uh, called Tar? And Throwback for- adventure horror adventure horror <laughs> and and a little bit of comedy thrown in as well yes oh yeah and throwback adventure comedy horror throwback it's got adventure. everything for halloween it's got everything <laughs> for halloween so that's kind of the goal isn't it it's a, this is a halloween film right yeah halloween and to be able to have fun and see a the a type of horror thriller fun movie that you don't see these days because everything's so uh gross out and disgusting and so well, there, there was there is a horror film, but there's a lot of funny stuff in it too. That, uh, yeah, people did, don't did, realize yeah. there really is quite 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 a bit of comedy. And um, I think Graham, I think one, and again, thank you, Graham, for joining us. And can I just give a little quick shout out to what a fan I am and to to your illustrious oh. career? What is it? 163 films? How crazy is that? Yeah. Uh, how crazy, how do you yeah. keep going? It, it must have something to do with the closet you're sitting in. I think that might have. No, no, I I keep acting because I have a mortgage. You have a mortgage to pay, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, listen, again, a pleasure. But I think, Graham, you get one. I mean, there's so many great lines in the film. And congratulations, Aaron, on the film. And and I hope lots of people get to see it. You can thank Aaron for that, letting me have the great line because... We had lived a lot of this stuff. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I loved it when, uh, as, was it your, your friend, Aaron, in the film, who drops the dime in your cup and you say, thank you, kind sir. But it was the, it was the pause. <laughs> that just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that brought it home for me, Graham. It was like, here's this guy who clearly is living a vulnerable life, but still has a sense of humor. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. That's so, Graham. That's him bringing this to bringing that this character to life, which uh, he's the only one who could have done it. Aaron, you know what? I'm probably going to appeal more to Graham here. Just a uh, uh, fantastic voyage came to mind. 1966. I was a kid. Uh, I, I I was born in 65. I think the hairline gives me away, but but um, <laughs> I saw that a few years later. It scared the heck out of me scared the heck out of me and i i've never really been a horror fan since and since uh, venice toronto uh, i've seen about four horror films now and and like you said throwback adventure um but there was a there was a bigger message to fantastic voyage you know you i think you have the line about a kernel of truth to every story is there what 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 are some of the truths that monster films have embedded within fantastic. them is that a crazy big question fantastic voyage i don't remember that one Raquel Welch uh, was in it, Ooh. I believe, and uh, I didn't, you know, I just, that, that was the name I was, I l- looked at my wife, I said, have you ever seen Fantastic Voyage? Scared the heck out of me. Anyway, it was just, there was, there were just some, I don't, and I just wondered if you had other films in mind as you were, you know, writing and directing this one. Oh, for me, yeah, uh, absolutely. It was all the ones that I liked as a kid, like I'd watch in the 90s DVDs of all kinds of movies. Actually, uh, one that I liked because I like amusement parks was called Roller Coaster with, with, that starred Timothy Bottoms uh, and Henry Fonda that, um, and he became, he's my father in the film, um, Timothy. And then uh, like Arachnophobia, uh, Scream, Jaws, uh, you, like these kind of movies that brought a fun element to the horror genre and didn't take themselves too seriously, but let you escape Clo- and Clo- learn Clover- about a new world. Cloverfield in that list. Oh yeah, that's great too. Like movies that make that let you escape, where you feel like you're learning about a new world. And so there's a, a lot of truths in this. I mean, it's based on a true Native American legend uh, that we came across. It's based on the tar pits, which I used to go to as a kid all the time for field trips. So I always thought it was weird. It's based on my love of Indiana Jones and archaeology and discovering things under the ground. And it's also based on this. When you see the film, there's a a, a family business, a small family business that's going under because the man is building condos and the subway system is digging down, which awakens um, the world underneath the tar pits. And that's a very real problem that's happening in our society is that, right is now. Is that is that a little pushback to raw capital? <laughs> is that a little pushback <laughs> to capitalism there? That and isn't that isn't that what's great about monster films? Aren't they usually a product of the culture they find themselves in? Right. It's. Uh, I th- it seems to me anyway. Well, you can put a lot of tension in, in uh, horror films. You can build it up so much until it's going to explode. Then you got to do something funny to give 
people are released. Because like, I remember in theaters, they used to have, I can't remember what, what the thing was, but uh, they had buzzers under the seats. And, right. Uh, every time this creature appeared, the, 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 your seat would vibrate. Yeah. Uh, didn't they call that sense around? Something like that. Yeah. Tower oh. Tower ammo. Yeah, maybe Towering Inferno, I think, had that, right? To try to bring you into the experience uh, a, a little bit more. Graham, I <laughs> did when you looked at this script, did did you know the the, the Native American in, component does, does that, I mean, how much does that draw you in? Are you really a practical uh, artist in the sense that this is a job for me? Or do you look at other things as well when you step in? Oh, I look at diversity. I've played New York cops. I played a judge in a film called Molly's Game. Uh, I played God twice. I played the <laughs> Archangel Gabriel. You got all um, your bases covered. And possibly next month I'll be playing the vice president. Oh, wow. Amazing. <laughs> of this fictional. I was going to say, you look, you couldn't look more like Mike Pence. <laughs> and you look like Donald Trump. <laughs> I bet. I yes, bet Mike, exactly. I bet Mike Pence hangs out in a closet very similar to the one that you have, Graham. It's. Uh, <laughs> it looks. No, you know what? It's so funny. When I first started podcasting, Graham, my my sound guy told me to go into a closet, hang some clothes, and use that as my sound booth. Speak yeah. into into the clothes because that would that would bounce the sound back. I love another line that you get, Graham. After all these years, you finally want to know my name. I just thought that I, I just thought that was, I mean, that what for me was worth the price of admission. Like, okay, this is a horror film, and having some fun, and a few gross out moments, and lots of tension. But, but I don't know. There's, there's, there's quite a, I don't know, intimate relational statement that's you know from the dime to that. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, it does. I mean, you can take a film anywhere you want to take it. You don't have to, you don't have to follow the path. Let's put it that way. If you get someplace and there's a nice little fork in the road, go and take that detour for a while. If you, if it doesn't work, you can go back on the road again. No. It's easy enough. Aaron was just beautiful about that. Because, uh, he'd let us just, he, as, I, as I say in the business, he dropped the reins and let us just run. And uh, some of the stuff we were doing was crazy as all get out. He'd come into the bust into the room I was in and I lit up a match and I held it out and I said, oh, you, don't you ever knock? <laughs> yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, and that was just, it was just supposed to be just the match. And then I think maybe in the script it just said, oh, you, like with a smirk. And he yeah. added the don't you ever knock. And it's just like, all right, that's stuck. Let's use that. Because <laughs> I, uh, Part of my training is an improv uh, with the groundlings. And I always like addition rather than being stuck in your own head. Like it has to be this way. Why does it have to be that way when there's something that can be better with the collaborative process that is filmmaking? Well, there's one rule in the business. If you don't shoot it, you can't use it. <laughs> and that, uh, and that too. And, uh, and when you see the film, that line, you're, you're talking about David about um, about you finally know my name. It does resonate because I again I focus on the different people in society and how some people just don't just ignore them. They just ignore them because of societal differences or whatever. And I wanted this to show that look everyone when when things hit the fan. Uh, not sure what language we're supposed to use on this. So when <laughs> things hit the fan. Uh, the you, oscillating uh, device. <laughs> That's you right, have yeah. to, yes. When things, yeah, you have to, uh, you're all, we're all on the same playing field. And as it so happens right now in a pandemic, we're also all on the same playing field dealing with a pandemic. So well, it just, it's just that concept. Yeah, it's good. I love how, how you give the, what appears to the appearance of the person who is supposedly most vulnerable in the story is really the one who's Virgil from, from the divine comedy, the guy that's, walking us through this, telling the story, holding the match in the dark. It's just, I, I love that. Graham, you were the guy, man. You you were you were in some respects, in my opinion, the hero. I was uh, honestly a great death scene too, by the way. Sorry, did I give that away? Is that, am I allowed to say that? Oh, spoiler. Oh, spoiler. spoiler. Oh, throwback adventure and a spoiler. Bummer. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, he may. He, there's also another surprise. So he may or may not die. Um, but, That's right. Uh, That's right. So, Talk about uh, we, turning we it on its head. That's true. Nice. We don't know for sure. It's um, true. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it's yeah. We've all we just had a, a great time, and I got to learn a lot too from Graham. Uh, I've always loved his work. We've become good friends, and uh, in filming it, I got to actually really learn from his uh, from his method and approach, which is it's not the Stellar Adler approach or name the other approach. It's the Graham Greene approach, and that's the approach I learned from. And they don't teach the Graham Greene approach in film school. They teach okay. it when you work with Graham. That's very cool. I love that. Graham, tell me more about that approach. Does it have anything to do with the, the phrase on your t-shirt there? Well, it starts with uh, when Aaron and I rest, first read the script, we were doing a scene and Aaron had this big long speech and he said, you know, I don't think I want to say anything in this scene. I said, you wrote it, you're saying it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be perfect with it. Just say what comes to your mind. Just to, just think about where we're going with the scene. You know, what, where's the end? And it can follow a snake. It can do anything. You can make it go over a hill or down on the ground. It, it doesn't matter as long as you get the point across. Is improvisation, a, for, is improvisation for you, Graham? Uh, as for Aaron, it seems like it's been a part of his history. Is that, is, that a, is that how you work as well? Like in, in the moment, what, what happens sort of happens? Yeah, that's it. And in film, uh, a film we did called Maverick uh, with Mel Gibson. James, James Garner. Yeah, all those guys. But Richard Donner came up to me and Mel and he says, what are these? And I said, they're our scripts. And he said, give me those. And he threw them over his shoulders and he <laughs> says, no, go act. Well, what do you right. want us to do? Go act, you're actors. <laughs> give, us, give us some kind of scenario. Give us an idea of what you want us to do. <laughs> so he, his, he made something up and we just improv the whole thing. So it, was, it was fun. So it's, there's, so, mean, so there's I, something. I, to... I, I love working that way. I, I, I can't be stuck. The only thing that I had to do was doing series television because they were real sticklers with that. Did it in Northern Exposure. I did that for a couple of years. And I said to the director in this big long speech, and I said, that is grammatically incorrect. He said, how That's do you hilarious. Know? He said, how, do you, how would you know? And I said, I'm an English major. Oh. So oh, he called right. LA and he got all the writers together. It took an hour and a half and they phoned him back and said, he's right, it is grammatically incorrect. So here's the new line. Nice. Nice. So this is this is a part of the Graham Greene school uh, of acting, is it, Aaron? Yeah. Yes, it is. Except he uh, never challenged me with grammatically correct. We just would play around because uh, I'm sure there were grammar errors. There's always grammar errors in anything. I just would never say I went to English school and became a a uh, and I'm an English professor. And I'm an English major, so I know more than you. No. no. Hey, quick quick question. And and uh, again, the movie's tar, folks. For for my listeners, uh, it's going to be online very soon, uh, coming soon to I guess a digital theater near you. And I think we only have a few more minutes. And it's uh, having a blast. And 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 I think we've got a couple more at least. But how do you go from um, and help me out here, Aaron? Restoring tomorrow to tar. And I think I read somewhere that you're working on a new doc. It's a that's a real kind of mix, right? I kind of like Graham's. Uh, when you look at Graham, Graham's profile, so many different roles, very eclectic. Yeah, I I've go done, for story. Done, well, oh yeah, you, you, no, go, you, go 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 for it, Graham. Go Graham, yeah. No, I've done a lot of stuff. The last I did a documentary about this girl in northern Ontario, Canada, who uh, she's what they call a water walker. And uh, Autumn Pelche is her name, and she spoke in front of the UN. She traveled around, her and Greta Thunberg, and uh, they're, they're of the same el ilk. You know, it's stuff that we couldn't do or nobody listened to us when we were kids. So I really support that girl. And, and uh, go ahead. Jump, no, just the jumping around from genres, and like Graham and I can relate in that. It's, it's storytelling. So yeah. if there's a good story and when I find a good story in my head or presented with some idea, it's, it's the story that matters. So whether it's a documentary, a narrative film, I've done far more narrative stuff than doc stuff, but uh, 
our last doc did restoring tomorrow um which is on amazon now got a uh, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I'll never do again. But it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't you, you may you you may uh, you may surprise yourself, Aaron. Yeah, oh, speak, I mean, speaking of new films, Aaron, I got I wrote a short story about ice fishing. I don't know if you know anything about ice fishing. I do for my family. Like they do it all the time and come like November, December. In I'm going to send it to you. Well, there that could be your new your next film, Aaron. And well, if Graham and I are definitely going to. Uh, we're going to work together again, probably next time in, uh, in Ontario, but I hear, uh, I hear there's a part for a podcaster in that script that he's just wrote. So, you know, re reach out if you need yeah, to. Yeah. His name's D David Peck. Exactly. Uh, right. That's yes. the character in the script. So how yes. can you not, but, but just like with, uh, jumping around with, with genres, I think is it's storytelling to me. I don't yeah. look at it yeah. as I'm one genre filmmaker or another. I'm a storyteller. If I like, a story if I want to tell a story I want to do it I want to get the team around that can help make it better and then it's up to the audience whether they like it or not but at least I know it's something that I like and that I'm interested in the people that worked on it are interested in so with tar yeah it's a different genre but it's exactly the type of film that I like and uh and I can't wait next time to hopefully have maybe do a number two and have a bigger budget um and uh and do it again because we did this super in the independent world where you work around a lot of different different obstacles and problem solve a lot. But I'm really excited with what we came across. We came with because I think it's a very uh, it's a fun pro approach to uh, this kind of film that you don't see right now. And man, do we need distractions during Halloween? Mm, and it's mm. also going to be in some theaters in Canada and in it's releasing uh, yeah. this Friday in the uh, around the U.S. Pre order pre order it on Apple. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Graham, Graham, I'm sitting about uh, 15 kilometers away from Hamilton, Ontario, uh, oh my right, right now. So that's that's I, that's. Uh, yeah, I, I I spent a week there one night. I know you did. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Graham, maybe last question because I know we've got to wrap it up, and I'm sorry about that, but we do, and that's just the okay. nature of this medium, it seems. But again, what a pleasure having you guys on face to face. Um, do you consider yourself as, uh, uh, I mean, I heard your voice at the beginning, the animation, and I go, hold, hang on a minute here. Am I, is this a documentary? Like, it, wonderful, like, step into this film and very offsetting and yet so thoughtful and, and meaningful. Do you consider yourself a storyteller first? Or do you say, oh, no, Graham Green actor, that's on your business card? No, I'm a storyteller. I, I'll, I'll tell my story. I, I don't. I don't care, you know, I go play pool with guys I don't know and hang around down in the park and talk to people I don't know and they don't know who I am and I don't care. I just like meeting people. I learned my acting chops sitting on a park bench, I think. And so I, I, I don't pigeonhole myself like Jack Nicholson does. Jack Nicholson, that's what he does. But uh, I consider the fact that I can am able and lucky enough to be asked to do a lot of different things, which is great. I think it's, I think that's a, what a great line. You learn your acting cho chops on the park bench. I mean, I think that's, 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 that is absolutely brilliant. Um, Aaron, thank you. Oh, Aaron, 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 Aaron should do the same thing. He got to do that, man. Just go sit on a park bench for the afternoon. Just go hang out with, go hang out with people. I'm going to go sit yeah. on a park bench in LA and just watch people walk along with masks. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what um, I did. So I lied. One final question, Aaron, real quick. Uh, this is the truth. This is what's going on down here. Um, my brother was one of, waiting to be awoken. Is this, is this your, is this that larger political comment about uh, uh, embedded in this horror film, in this, in this monster movie that I, seems to be thematic with monster films? Yeah, it's about um, man. Like, look, we're going through a lot of things, and again, these are these are subtleties in the film. It's yeah, really meant to be. I want people to have a lot of fun, and if you get what you're getting, David, out of it, that's extra good because, yeah, man is destroying uh, things to do with the climate and just yeah. digging down and ruining a lot of stuff that otherwise maybe should be left alone. And man has come in and destroyed Native American land. Uh, for centuries and that's a big huge problem Graham and I have talked about that mm. a lot since we made the, the movie mm. just just you know sh talking about it. it just those kind of elements of thinking down man destroying not respecting the gift of the land we were given 
that is so important to me and climate change and all that. So yeah, it's all part of this. I, 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 it's all I part of us. I had an, had an old guy, old, a nice old Jewish man that I love dearly. And he says, you know, you're one of the lost tribes of Israel, the native <laughs> yeah. people. And I, well. I, lo I, I love you can do that through a story that, you know, you want people to escape and have fun. I think that's what's so beautiful about film and, and frankly, just art across the board and, and to be able to have those messages that, you know, plant, planting seeds, right? And uh, uh, it's just, uh, I interviewed Michelle Latimer, um, Inconvenient Indian from uh, Toronto Film Festival uh, about her new film and, you know, your comment about land and your conversations with Graham and, and Thomas King basically says, it's all about land. And isn't it amazing that, you know, we find ourselves having this meaningful chat around, around tar and not that amazing. I think it's totally uh, makes sense. And what a pleasure having you both on the show today. Th thanks for your time to both of you. Uh, real, really appreciate it. We've had Aaron Wolf and, and Graham Green here talking about uh, their new film coming soon to a digital theater near you. Uh, we've been talking about their film tar. Thanks to you both guys. Well, thank you. I was just doing laundry today anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you and you can uh go to tar the movie to see everything nice. coming or go pre-order it on apple and all that stuff but it also can be will be in theaters and then uh on demand if you're uncomfortable going to drive-ins and theaters uh on apple starting on october 20th awesome thank thanks for your time today guys really appreciate it thank you thank you